Hey guys, how's it going? Matt Dederick here for another astrophotography tutorial. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe because I'm going to keep you up to date on some fun astrophotography related content. If you guys didn't see my last video, well, you might have already missed out because the Geminid meteor shower peaked last night. It was cloudy in Pittsburgh, so I was unable to shoot it. But if you had clear skies and you got out to shoot the Geminid meteor shower, I would like to show you today in a follow-up video how to take those numerous photos that hopefully have some Geminid meteors in them and composite them into one main image with the meteors that you captured throughout the night. So I shot a set of data from Mount Rainier National Park back in 2015 and I used a Nikon D800 with a 24 millimeter lens. I shot it at f1.4 and I was doing 13 second exposures all night over and over until my camera battery died. So if you had a chance to get out and shoot the Geminid meteors in a format similar to a time-lapse video, what you can do is take all those individual photos as long as your tripod and camera were stationary during the event and you can layer them in to create one main photograph from the meteor shower. So I'm gonna use Photoshop to do that. I'm gonna use a few example photos from that Perseid meteor shower event. I'm not gonna use all of them because it's gonna take a long time to layer all the photographs into each other, but I'm gonna go through and show you the technique and hopefully you guys can learn and have fun doing it yourselves. So thanks again for joining me guys and let's jump into it. Okay, so I have the time-lapse sequence that I shot of the Perseid meteor shower selected. All these photographs have been edited and turned into a time-lapse video, but the great benefit of a time-lapse is we have all these single individual photos that we can pull some of the bright meteors from. And what I did here is I selected them from this folder and we're gonna use them and pull them into Photoshop. So in this example, I have 20 photographs and I have one main image that is gonna be the background. So if you have a photograph of the Milky Way or a certain constellation in a position over a landmark, the great benefit here is you can pick one as your main background and then you can layer in the meteors on top of that. So now we're gonna pull these photographs into Photoshop. And this is the main image I wanna use as the background. We have the beautiful Milky Way appearing to erupt out of the summit of Mount Rainier. And from here, we have all the photographs with a few of the brighter meteors in place that I need to layer in. So you could see some of the meteors passing by, pretty cool. And we caught a few very bright ones as well. So I have some dimmer ones to use. And then we have some brighter ones like this one, just right over the summit. And then we even captured a bright one. And this one here even lit up the ground. It was crazy. We were just laying out on the ground and this one lit up the ground like lightning. It was one of the coolest experiences and my heart was out of my chest when it happened. So you can get lucky and you can see some of those fireball meteors as well happen. Okay, once all those photographs are open, ready to go, we need to now stack them into one photograph, the main base image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that main photograph and I'm gonna layer in the other photos by using Control A on the keyboard and Control C, go back to the main photograph and I'm gonna click paste, Control V, and you see now we have overlaid a photograph here. Okay, so we need to align this photograph to as close to where the meteor actually was. So go ahead, change the blending mode to difference. And you're gonna notice that all of a sudden you kind of have these stars in between each other. And that is going to allow us to align them. So if you click the move tool up at the top or V on your keyboard, you can see you can grab that top layer and you can move it. So I see these stars over here are about where they should be in the night sky. So you click that layer and move it, and you can hit Control T on your keyboard, and you can do a free transform. And look, you can actually rotate that canvas to try to get your photos somewhat aligned, and then swap back and try to move it as close to where it was occurring in the night sky. And that's gonna be cool because that's gonna make it seem like all the meteors are coming from the radiant where the meteors are technically appearing to happen in the night sky. 
Okay, once we have that first image as close to being aligned as possible to the main base image, we can turn the layer mode to lighten. And what that is going to do is it's gonna reveal the lightness in the image. But what we need to do is we need to create a mask. So we're gonna create a mask and we're actually gonna hide this layer. So if I hold Alt and click on this layer icon, it's gonna turn this into a mask and it's completely black, which means it's not going to be shown. So what we can do now is click on that layer mask and with the brush tool, we can find generally where that meteor was at and with the white mode here for the brush tool, that's gonna reveal. Okay, now I'm gonna brush in, try to find the meteor and there it is. So if I zoom in, what I can do is I can remove that action and I can make my brush smaller and I could just paint in that meteor here. And I'm gonna hit X to swap my brush to the dark mode. And it's gonna allow me to cover back up that edge and just kind of blend it in as natural as possible. So it's all about having fun here. And I think this is pretty cool to show the night sky in a new unique way that our human eye can't experience. If we turn on and off the layer, you can see that we have one meteor painted in now. Okay, now that we've layered in our first meteor, you can see it's gonna take a little bit of time to build up the whole composite image, but we're gonna follow those same exact steps for all of the subsequent photos that have meteors in them. So I'm gonna go to the next photo, hit Control A, hit Control C, go back to our main photograph and hit Control V. I'm gonna change the blending mode to difference and I'm going to roughly align the photograph. I can go to Control T to do kind of a free transform to try to get it close. I can take that blending mode to lighten. I can go ahead and click this and by holding Alt and clicking the layer mask, I'm gonna turn a dark mask on so I'm gonna paint around to try to find the meteor. And there it is right here. So I can make the brush smaller. I can remove that step just to try to get the meteor itself. And I'm gonna trace it down for as long as that meteor is visible. And now I can hit X to go back to the black paint button and I can paint back that edge to just make it look a little bit more natural and not add in any stars that weren't necessarily there before. Okay, let's zoom out. And if you toggle on and off the layer mask here for this one, you can see we have the other meteor painted in. And we can turn off the other meteor and you can see that that one is now layered in. So just build up the image following the same exact techniques. I'm gonna go through and layer in the remaining meteors for this example and have fun while you do this, guys. I know it's tedious, but this is pretty cool because we're making a work of art. That was a lot of layering in of meteors, guys, but I hope you got out to go shoot the Geminids the last few nights with your own gear. Remember, astrophotography doesn't have to be all about big, expensive equipment. All you need is a camera and a tripod and a willingness to adventure and have fun because that really is what astrophotography is all about with this technique. I hope you guys learned a few tricks and I would love to see the photographs you guys create. So let me know in the comments where I can go to check out your own photograph of the Geminid meteors and let me know if you guys have questions. But don't forget, smash the like button, subscribe. It means a lot that you guys are part of this astrophotography family and remember, clear skies and keep having fun guys. Mm -hmm.